Hey everyone, and welcome to this video comparing adjacency lists and adjacency matrices. I'll be explaining what they are and what they represent, and why you should not simply choose one because of a preference, but you should fit the structure to the problem you're trying to solve. Both the adjacency matrix and the adjacency list are representations used to store graphs. Graphs are networks of nodes called vertices, and the adjacency list and matrix are used to define the connections between these vertices. And these connections are called edges. Let's see how I can store the fact that I would like a connection from 0 to 1 in the adjacency matrix. The adjacency matrix works as follows. We have a row for each of the vertices in our graph, and we have a column for each of the vertices in our graph. That is why an adjacency matrix is always a square shape. So if you want a connection from 0 to 1, we say from row 0, to column 1. And to indicate that we have an edge, we type 1. There are situations in which you would use different values than 1, but for simplicity's sake, we'll simply use 0 to indicate that there is no connection or no edge, and we'll use 1 to indicate that there is an edge. Let's look at how we can store this connection in the adjacency list. The adjacency list also has a list for each node in our network. So we have a list for vertex 0, vertex 1, vertex 2, and vertex 3. In these lists, we store to what other vertices this vertex is connected. So if we want to connect vertex 0 to vertex 1, we go to the 0th list to say from 0, and we add the number 1 to that list, saying 0 is connected to 1. Let's now add another connection to see what happens to the adjacency matrix and the adjacency list. Let's add another connection from 0 to 2. In our adjacency matrix, we go to row 0 and we set a 1 at column 2 to indicate the connection from 0 to 2. In our adjacency list, we say from 0 and we add that there is a connection to vertex 2. Let's add two more connections and see what changes. We'll add an edge from 2 to 1. So in our adjacency matrix, we'll go to the row with index 2 and say that we have an edge to column 1. In our adjacency list, we'll go to the list with index 2 and add that we go to 1. Let's add another edge from 1 to 3. So in our adjacency matrix, we pick row 1 and set column 3 to the value 1 to indicate our new edge. In our adjacency list, we also go to index 1 to indicate that we have a connection from 1 to 3. As you can see, both of these representations can be used to describe a graph. So why do they both exist, and why would you choose one over the other? Let's go to our code and see what the advantages and disadvantages are of using one or the other representations in practice. Let's say we would want to check if an edge exists. In our matrix, we know that the row is the from, and the column is the to. So to check whether an edge exists in a matrix, in our function we want to check whether there is an edge from A to B, we can simply ask, is row A and column B equal to 1? So we can instantly check whether there is a connection from A to B. In an adjacency list, we can't instantly check whether there is a connection from A to B. In order to check whether there is a connection from A to B, we have to do the following. We have to say, for every connection that A has, which would be everything in one of these lists, so let's say that A is 0, and it would be for every connection in this list, check if that connection is to B, and if it is to B, we return true. If we end up going through all the connections and not finding a connection to B, we return false, because no connection was found. Currently our graph doesn't have that many connections, so our adjacency list has very short lists inside of them, so our for loop won't iterate that often. But when there are more connections in our graph, finding whether two vertices are connected is going to be faster in an adjacency matrix than it is in an adjacency list. Let's look at another problem where an adjacency list is faster. Let's try to answer this question. What nodes are you connected to? So given a node A or given a vertex A, what other vertices are you connected to? Let's say we would check in this adjacency matrix to what other vertices vertex A is connected. What we would need to do is loop over each possible connection from zero to any other vertex and then store the indices of the vertices that are connected. So let's look at our code where we try to find the neighbors in the matrix 
we start with an empty list of neighbors, then we loop over all the connections that might exist from A to somewhere else. And if that connection is equal to one, we store it in our neighbors list. After looping through all our possible connections, we return the list of neighbors for which we did have a connection. As you can see already, when we want to do this in an adjacency list, it is way faster. This is because the adjacency list already stores the labors for each node. Because the row at index zero contains the IDs of each vertex it is connected to. So finding the neighbor in an adjacency list is simply returning index A of that adjacency list. Returning all the neighbors of zero in our adjacency list would thus return the list containing one and two. We have now seen two questions. We're answering it with either an adjacency matrix or an adjacency list was faster, but Choosing which one to use is not only dependent on the problem, but it's also dependent on the properties of your graph. Let's take a look at an example. One of the properties we might look at would be whether the graph is dense or sparse. A sparse graph is a graph with very few connections. As you can see, in a sparse graph, the list in the adjacency list are not very long, and thus maybe finding whether there is a connection in the adjacency list might become less inefficient. We also have densely connected graphs where there are lots of connections. So let's take a look at a new question we would like to answer, which is a combination of our previous two questions. So to answer the question, we need to do many checks whether there is a connection. And we also need to ask many times to each vertex what its neighbors are or what other vertexes it is connected to. In this case, picking either an adjacency matrix or an adjacency list will both be an advantage and a disadvantage, and a choice between them might be hard. But if we add the knowledge of the fact that our graph is sparse, then we could consider the fact that checking whether there exists a connection in an adjacency list is less expensive or is less inefficient than the algorithm to find whether there is a connection suggests. And since that for a sparsely connected graph, checking connections in an adjacency list is less inefficient, and finding the neighbors of any vertex in our graph is better in an adjacency list, the property of the graph being that it is sparse, helps us choose that an adjacency list would be a better choice to solve this problem. And at this point in the video, if you're thinking about some of the previous problems I've showed, but in this and this case, the adjacency list is faster, but you said the adjacency matrix is faster, then that is the entire point of this video. Make sure you choose the right structure for the problem you're trying to solve. I really hope you learned something new in this video and it helped you understand adjacency list and adjacency matrices and what they represent. If it did, please leave a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing. Peace.